You are listening to the 8% Nation podcast, created to help you become a top producer in the insurance industry. Enjoy the show. (laughs) Welcome to the uh, 8% Nation podcast, Cody. Dude, welcome back, bro. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're doing a you and me a duo without a guest. This is the first time in like probably last five, six weeks. Seriously. Yeah, yeah. So um, what I wanted to do was uh, cover a topic that I feel has a lot of buzz right now with my friends that know you, but I work with more just because, you know, of Secure Agent Marketing that know you real well, but I end up working with them a lot. And they all love your Instagram stories with you doing jumping jacks with your sales (laughs) team and doing push-ups with your sales team. And um, you really, I feel like watching um, from the other side i'm looking at seeing your sales team is really like turn it around the numbers are looking incredible it's good not that they were that bad before from a numbers perspective but they you know they are like killing it yeah and like you're doing you're making an extra effort so what i would like to do is you know a lot of um our audience either wants to run a team has a small team Mm -hmm. wants to has a small team wants a big team and one of the things that we do a lot is when we travel around to clients, we'll go look at how their teams engage with their leaders. And you yeah. come in as a guest pump up kind of situation. So yeah. what I want to talk about today is really just, you know, how to manage a sales team, how to lead a sales team, how to um, uh, hype up a sales team, get everybody on task, hit the goals that you want. So what do you think? You, you okay with that topic, buddy? Dude, totally, man. Totally. I would say that's uh, what I've enjoyed the most the last few months is not only our team, but other teams. and. Yeah. It's, I think it's one of the big things, like you said, that most that people struggle with the most. Getting their team motivated when they're unmotivated. Picking up the energy and the culture when it sucks. Yep. You know? and, and we've had it happen here. Well, it's just hard not to kind of get in, uh, like, just grindy, like, same old, same old. Yep. You know? And yep. so, you know, just to give you a, some props, like, you know, back when I first came and versus now, your interaction with the sales team and the sales team's tone and just excitement has been absolutely tenfold increased in the positive direction. Thanks, buddy. So walk me through what clicked with you, you know, not not to say it was like horrible before and now it's great. Right. But I'm just saying you have leveled up. I've seen it. Yeah. On your sales team. How many sales guys do you got now? We have, well, we have another one starting uh, immediately. So eight. Eight sales guys. And it's really kind of been around five to eight pretty much, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, I would say most of the time it's always been like three to f- five. Okay, so what? What? There's been a click in your mind. We, you and I, haven't talked about it. Yeah. What clicked on? What did you notice you were doing wrong or change or just walk me through sort of? Well, the f- I feel like the uh, truth is in the numbers, and I saw that our sales team was. Not growing, sometimes going backwards, about even. We had our lowest, one of our lowest lead months ever for a week. For, for, for not months, but for a week. Yeah, the pace. We had one week that was really bad. And I, I blamed, I just knew that I, it was my fault. Yeah, yeah. I just felt it. I'm like, man. Uh, but what, what ha- what's happened along the way is it's really easy for a, sales manager, leader, owner to say, well, these guys just aren't me. They're not as good as me. They don't work as hard as me. It's really easy to like blame other people. Like when we were traveling and I was blaming the audience for the lack of energy when really I just needed to freaking bringing it. have some energy. Yeah. Uh, it's the same, same thing that, 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 that mini tour that we did taught me that the result is 100% within my control for sure in all all areas of life. And, and, and my dad even said it to us at one point, I remember when, inspect what you expect, yep. you know? And so I started inspecting what I expected to happen and I didn't used to. Well, there's been a, an awesome, I mean, your guys' numbers are crazy. I mean, some yeah. of the biggest days that I've seen have been lately. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, we, had a, we had a five-figure sales day Tuesday. Uh, and that didn't used to happen that much, but now it's happening like several times a week. Yep. Yep. Um, well, just with our internal sales team, because we get a lot of revenue outside of here, but just our internal. Yeah, staff. that doesn't include. That's only selling leads. That's exactly. One product of your forty-two thousand that you have. This is true. <laughs> um, so okay, so truth is in the numbers. Obviously, numbers don't lie. So, w- at what point did you just kind of introspectively say, 
I got to do something different. Like walk me through that mental. Yeah. So I, I saw the numbers and thought, oh my gosh, like what, what's the problem here? So I naturally will always do a complete 180. <laughs> if something's not going well, I'm on the other end of it. You yeah. know, that's just my personality. So I said, okay. I, I said, you know what? I'm going out of, this is when I was uh, going on vacation for a week. I said, you know what? I'm going to try something. And I'm going to just test my team and see if they're lazy, if they want it, and then I'm going to move forward from there. I'm going to use one week, and I'm going to let them do whatever the heck they want, show up whenever they want, but I'm going to make it the most competitive week of all time. From an incentive standpoint. Tons of incentives, thousands of cash. Sold. I allowed them to sell leads at the lowest price I had ever sold them from a sales team perspective. Anything they wanted, I gave it to them. Massive incentives. You know, the first place guy was getting a grand. Second place, per, you know, was getting was getting two, 500 bucks. Third place was getting 250. Their commission, uh, I'd already doubled it earlier in the year. Increased their base. Like anything they wanted, I just did it. Yeah. Which isn't like me. But I said, you know what? I'm going to see who really wants this thing. And by doing that, we had the biggest week we've ever had by far. Yep. And so that taught me, okay, it's not the sell staff. There's some other things going on. Now, do I need to leave the price super low forever? No. Do I need to... In- get crazy with incentives every week? No. Do they need an incentive? Yes. But I thought, okay, there's more that I can do. So what I did is I moved them all to the back of the office, right outside of my office. So they literally have me breathing down their neck all day. Um, and not in a bad way, because I'm not like someone that just micromanages everyone because I'm just too busy. But I can hear them. I can see them. I know when they're saying something they're not going to sell, or I know when they're yeah. saying something they may. Yeah. You can just feel it. I... Uh, added some tiered bonuses to incentivize them, gave them the ability to sell leads for a little lower price, not, not, not as low as normal, uh, or as they did that one week. And I decided I'm going to train them every day at 840, every day from 830 to nine and every day from 130 to two, we're going to do three things. We're going to, I'm going to train them. We're going to pump up our energy because it sucks. And I'm going, and we're going to role play. And by doing all those things, We've seen, oh, and I'm going to add music because I've, these big call centers are doing well, typically have yeah. music. So I'm yeah. like, okay. It's just like, it's it's so easy as a business owner, if, if you're out there listening, to pull on the reins really hard and be a drill sergeant, get on to people all the time, take away music, take away fans, take away like, you know what I mean? Like all the stuff that people just, you know, t- t- can, you have to sell full price, like just take everything away. Well, then the culture sucks and nobody's happy. Yeah. You know, so yeah. so I've had to learn that. Well, and I even noticed that, you know, because we've talked about this before, you and I are athletes. Yeah. And sometimes we respond just fine. I mean, I've responded, I would respond just fine with someone getting on my butt. Mm-hmm. But I've noticed that you kind of maybe would like jump on people that aren't necessarily with an athletic background necessarily and they would just shut down. It's true. You know, and it, remember, I remember being like talking about it and you're like, man, I'm like, it ain't working. You know, these guys aren't putting up any numbers. They'll just get, yeah. they'll just wallow for two hours. Yep. You know what I mean? So you, you, it seems like you even changed the way you sort of communicate with them as well. I've had to, because it's real easy. Like you said, if someone's having a bad sales day, it's easy for me to jump on them hard. Yeah. Like you can do better. What the heck? Come on. I'm looking yeah. at, you know, I'm looking at this. What, what's going on? Get your back together. Yada, yada. Cause I expect it out of me. Yeah. However, like you said, not everybody responds the same way. So you have to talk to different people differently. Yeah. But I've tried to take myself out of a, I'm not their boss. I'm here to help them make more money and, and increase sales. Yep. And I need them to be happier and more motivated and I need them to improve. And so, it, yeah, that's took a, that's been a hard, hard shift for me. Do you I'll, feel like, um, do you feel like this correlates to insurance sales teams? Oh, totally. hundred percent. It's the exact same. I like I'm doing, the, I'm doing a lot of the same stuff with, you know, I, I, anybody else. When I go train someone's team, I was just training a team of Hispanic agents in Florida. Okay. I did all the same stuff, you know, positive, motivating, 
training, energy, role play, jumping jacks, you know, sort of the, the new sales games I've come up with to try to make it fun. I like it. Just anything I can do to, because most people just struggle with like motivation. We didn't have tiered bonuses. Now if they hit, now if they're close to a tier, they want to hit the tier. Okay. Okay. What about, um? so how do you, how did you come, incentives seems like something that you're, you've put a high focus on based on our conversation. Yep. Which doesn't seem like there really was many incentives six or eight months ago, really? No, there was none. So what changed there? Just, just I want to try it. And then you just were like, well, this is working. Yeah. I, yeah. I said, I said, I'm going to put, I'm going to put myself out of the way. And for one week, I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the extreme. And I saw them fight for it harder than I've ever seen. Yeah. I'm like, well, maybe I'm just not structuring this the right way. I agree. And I remember hearing just some feedback of, for whatever reason, man, it's almost like not even about the extra $100 bonus. It's more just like, now it's like you you get here and it's like, if there's a reason to take a next step and work harder for the last two hours on Friday, they're going to do it, whether it actually matters at the end of the day or not. And those well, little incentives... I've found and I've seen have I've worked really well as well. And you've really kind of figured that out. So, so before it was like a flat commission yeah, with no incentives. Yeah. Base, base commission and uh, no incentives, no bonuses, yeah, no tiers. Yeah. Also, I noticed that we weren't making sales for the first two hour, hour and a half to two hours of every day, typically. And I kind of noticed a trend because I, I track numbers for everything for every person it's just something I've always done. I know it helps. And I learned, I started asking them, hey, what time did you wake up this morning? Yeah. And if they just woke up 30 minutes before work, Brian Tracy always said, you have to wake up at least two hours before any sales-related activity or any business meeting at all. I can see that. Or it takes time for your brain to wake up. I can see that. I can see that. In fact, have you, you and I are a lot alike where we think in the shower. I know we've talked about that. Yeah. Have you ever just like, been t- I mean, for me, I notice this all the time. I'm taking a shower and I can't remember if I wash my hair or not because I'm just so yeah, brain dead and thinking totally, about stuff. Totally, totally. And then I, yeah, so, I'll wash it twice. Exactly. Just so, because. But that's, I mean, that's totally true. So, okay. So incentives, you work on, we work on that. You worked on the way you speak to people. Yep. What, 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 what are some tips? Like, what are some things that you, did you just say, you know what, I'm going to be nicer? Or did you say, no, I'm going to be more direct or I'm going to. Well, I'm going to try to be, I'm not going to let them get away with stuff. I'm going to have a little, I'm going to have a little looser leash slightly, but I'm going to be positive. And, and if I notice a trend, I'm going to let them know, Hey, yeah. dude, I, I need you focused because yeah. when you're focused, you're really good. Yeah. And when you're showing up late, you know, it looks bad. You're a leader. Yeah. You're yeah. doing well. Yeah. 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 Like, Hey, when you have 80 dials, you crush it. Yep. Like I'm telling you, if you, if you haven't seen yourself improve, like, hey, I can help you make six figures in 2020. I just need you to wake the freak up. Like, I yep. can't want it more yep. than you. I'm here yep. to help. Yep. Yep. If you have questions, come to me. If you need me to TO a call, I'm here. You know, uh, just all that. Really. I like it. Um, just like any good leader does, just builds them up. You know, yep. it doesn't necessarily like, you know, yeah, okay. All right. Um, I've also found ways to increase their energy and their confidence at the same time. With those uh, circle closing challenge yep. and the um, pick your pick pick your pick your rebuttal pick your objection. Why game. don't you uh, Why don't you tell the people? Give them the uh, how the game works, and maybe they'll play with their team. Yeah, so you can you can actually watch it on our YouTube. Uh, circle, okay. circle closing challenge. Uh, so we'll get the team in a circle. Say Landon and I are standing side by side in the circle. I'll say a question. Landon won't respond to the question. He'll simply ask another question. And you keep going around the circle. And if someone hesitates or they screw up the question or they say something they've already personally said or they repeat what the person previously just before them said, eh, they get kicked out of the circle. Got it. And you keep going from five, six, eight, whatever it is, down to head to head. And you're going back and forth asking each other questions. And then one wins. And so by doing that, uh, that's one of the games. By doing that, it really gets their brain moving faster, them talking okay. faster. Because right. what I've learned about salespeople is when you're in control, you make the sell. Well, to be in control, you got to think on your feet. You got to be ready, to, ready when someone asks you a question, and you have to be willing to ask a question every time along the way. And so, by doing that, 
they're more confident. They're better. They're woke up. Their energy's right. It's competitive. It's, it's fueling them. Yep. So by the time nine o'clock hits, before they were half asleep, now they're like freaking on a high, um, ready. Yeah, good. And, good. and we're all making sales early in the morning now. Well, I'm just noticing, you know, that I mean, every you got your numbers posted on the on the uh, in the sales pit. I went back to the whiteboard yep. where we track the numbers every day. We, so you, numbers don't lie. I mean, yeah. their sales are up, Big attitudes time. up, team morale's up. Didn't you also restructure timing of lunches? And, yeah, they used to all go different times. And they, why'd you? Why'd and you? Most people would say, well, you don't want all your salespeople all eight to go at the same time because you're going to miss an inbound call. Okay. The reason I did it is I want to train them all for another 30 minutes every afternoon. Well, if they're doing different lunches, someone may be on a call during training. And so I'm like, hey, you leave it and, and, and you leave it 1230. You come back by 130 and we're training from 130 to two. And if, okay. they, they, if they miss a call, the girls will take a message. Okay. Uh, I even had first day guys like, hey, can I go take an earlier lunch so that I'm back in time? Like maybe like noon to one. No. Yeah. We're all taking lunch at the same time. Yeah. You know, yeah. and also it's provided more organization and structure too. Do you feel like salespeople, I feel like salespeople actually respond and need structure personally. Yeah, they really do. Uh, Grant Cardone said it on Jordan Belfort's podcast. He said that salespeople should never be left up to their own devices. I agree. I've had a bad habit in the past of letting my salespeople do whatever the freak they wanted, whenever they wanted to. Yeah. And if you give them too much. Yeah, no, I that's hear what you. happens. I hear you. Um, well, okay. So you, you, you cleaned up the timing. You, what else? Is there any other shifts you feel like that you kind of made or any other tips for those that have a smaller sales team like you? Um, that they respond that they also come to me with ideas now before I was the corporate boss that wouldn't let them sell something at a discount or wouldn't let them bring an idea to me because I know what's best and I don't need your opinion. Uh, now I'm like open to ideas. They've given me several ideas. We've now got a lot of custom filters and custom additions that in, in agents can add to their order that they didn't, we, I didn't allow that stuff before. Like what? Like get, let's talk about um, a radio. You can re reduce your radius for a small okay. fee. Okay. You per can, lead. Yeah, you okay. can lower your age range down to 65 if you don't want to sell above that. You can um, rush your order so you don't have to wait. You can add a higher quality lead. You know, we'll, we'll do custom, we'll do a little better ad copy, you know, or maybe add life insurance that cost, you know, is affordable and cost a, a dollar a day, stuff like that to like okay. make it even better. Okay. Um, so it's just allowed all the things that people are asking them, hey, can I do this? I'm just allowing them yeah, to do it. Sure you can, but it costs money because, you know, it's going to increase the lead cost. Exactly. Yeah, I had a client today um, talk through that as well, and I just was like, yeah, you can do whatever you want. Here's how it's going to affect your cost per lead. And they're like, oh, oh, I didn't think of it like that. Okay, well, yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah, I'd rather have this particular situation because it's better for my campaign. Yep. It's You know what I mean? That's fine. Exactly. Um, so cool. So that's good. So you added flexibility, innovation to the product. Innovation. Um, uh, I tried to bring new, new, new updates to them. Um, I'm just, I'm focused, cool. you know, even when I'm not here, I'm calling in or I'm checking on their numbers or I'm texting them or I'm having yep. Andy or the girls report to me on what's going on. Um, also if they get, I let them have fun, you know, I try to not be as strict as I used to be. However, if they go on talking about 15, football for 15 minutes, you know, hey, I'm going to let them know that, hey, yeah. I need you I need you focused. I need I you like guys it. to wake up. I like it. Um, well, I mean, we've certainly seen the results. So, you know, what, what is there any other, like, tips you have for those that are struggling with their small team or turnover? Because I haven't seen a lot of turnover, really. No, I, I honestly think we've also made the interview process tougher. Okay. I don't want to waste – I used to waste a lot of time by letting anyone jump on the phones and, yeah. and just suck. Now – you have to interview with Andy. Then you have to interview with Andy and Steve. Then you have to meet me. Then you have to shadow the sales team for at least an hour. Okay. Because we had a guy several weeks ago, a couple months ago, whatever, quit at lunch. Four hours. In. First day. Quits at lunch. I'm like, I mean, he's a quitter, but I blame us for that problem, yeah, not him. You, yeah, how do you miss that hard on somebody? Yeah. Well, you know what it was? What? It was probably... He saw that I'm a little crazy, a little intense, 
Um, you know, we're doing push-ups every day together. It's like a freaking boot camp, you know, but we're having fun and playing games and he's going to be on the phone all day. And I don't think you realized all that, but now I want you to know before you ever think about joining the team. And I don't, I don't know. The only way we would lose someone now is if they got here and they were just lazy. Yeah. Yeah. And then they just feel uncomfortable because everyone else is out working them. Yeah. You know? And they'll probably quit anyway. Yeah. But call centers typically have a higher turnover in general, but I haven't really seen much turnover. And I mean, we've, it's been, it's been no, good. that's the, 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 the only issue now is where do we put them all? Yeah. Because everybody we bring in, for instance, uh new guy, Jordan, he's, he's had uh, six cells this week. Oh yeah. It's his first week. Jordan. How, how much revenue? Probably four grand. Nice. Four or five grand. I mean, the dude's awesome. going to make a grand, in, a grand his first week, that's you know, awesome. but that's he's, awesome. he, he's good. He works hard. He's coachable. He listens. Um, I also set the standard. This is a good point, too, we haven't talked about. I set the standard in the interview. When they meet me, because I don't know them yet, I almost try. I don't try to scare them, but I let them know, hey, I'm 100% in charge. A little Marcus yeah. Limonis action. Yeah. I'm 100% in charge. I'm the best salesperson in the building. What I say goes. If you're not coachable and you won't do what I say, then you won't work out. Yeah. Yeah, so if yeah. any of that's not going to work for you, then don't come back. You to shouldn't interview. work here. Yeah, that's good. And it, you know what? It, it like sets a tone, man. It really does. So what? What are some? Uh, what are some interview techniques that you have? You know, besides that particular one, what? What's another thing you're that you um, go to that you used to weed out? Disc assessment. Okay. If they're a S or C, we don't hire them. So D's like dominance. I'm direct. I'm decisive. I'm you know aggressive. I'm competitive. I is I'm good with people. I'm a networker. I'm influencer. I'm social. Uh, um, that's I. S is uh, service, support. You know, servant style. You know, mentality. I'm yep. I'm, I'm, yep. I'm I'm good at that type of role. Uh, customer service, those type of things. And then C is like uh, consistency, conscientiousness. I, I always think of like a. It's like I, I think of C as like a computer person. You know, Greg, yep. Bailey. Yep. You know, th- yep. they're they are they 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 don't mind working on a computer all day because that's their personality. And I used to think there was right and wrong personalities. Yeah. There's just right and wrong personalities for, for roles. positions. Yeah, we all that's need it. each other. We're yeah. a body. A business is a body. You got hands I, and arms and yeah, feet. Yeah, I used to think everybody had to have a high D and a high I just like me to be on the sales team. Well, that's not necessarily the case. They just don't need to be an S or a C. So now they've got to have some combination of a D, a, a D or an I has to be their leading letter in their test or... We don't hire them. What's your favorite uh, interview question? Ooh, my favorite interview question is, what do you know about us? Okay. How much research have you done? Have okay. you checked us out? Have you looked into us? The people that don't are lazy. Okay. Because what interview would you go to and not look up the company you're going to interview at? I mean, you're being an idiot at this point to not Google it, at least on your phone while you're in the yeah. parking lot. Yeah, and we don't hire idiots. <laughs> you know what I mean? Seriously. If you don't do your research, you're lazy. Yeah. Maybe you're overconfident. Or you're just not thinking. Maybe you don't, you're yeah. not thinking. You're not aggressive. You're not thinking smartly. You're not you using don't even wisdom. Want, yeah, yeah. You, so you almost don't even want the job. So no, now, yeah, I agree totally. Andy asked that question. If they didn't do any research, the interview's over. Thanks for coming in. Has that happened? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So there, there's a lot of little things that, we, that we've never even talked through this. But so how did, uh, how did, uh, um, these last 90 days we've like changed everything. Oh, for sure. What is, um, do you guys still look at people's cars? Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. I heard that. Um, uh, where, where did I we think hear it was that? Belford or Cardone or somebody. It was somebody. Oh no, it was, uh, Andy, was it Andy Frisella? I heard Andy Frisella talked about it at 10 X two from okay. stage. Cause he's got an amazing culture at, at, at first form. And, so now um, Andy sends one of the support girls out to look, not to get in their car, but to look through the windows. And if the car is a wreck, the interview's over. <laughs> that's funny. I mean, and... We're just not going to hire them. That's interesting. Yeah, because they're lazy too. I agree. You know? I agree. I agree. I'm never going to let my Jaguar have 42 bags of McDonald's in it, you know? <laughs> Where would they fit? That's also you'll, true. You'll have two seats, man. Yeah. Try to fit this for six foot nine frame. We go to movies. And I'm like, yeah, you're like over there sitting there, like, like, a, like you're in a smart car. Um, you should own a smart car. Actually, by the way, dude, my uh, friend has a Tesla. Yeah, and he's got that park where it comes gets him. I saw it work. No way. Yeah, dude, he gets on his phone. 
it'll go like 200 feet and he'll be like right here and it'll back out and go in and come pick him up, dude. Oh my you know that? gosh. Dude, I got to get a Tesla now. Dude. So he said actually. I need a Tesla now no, too. He said now they're actually, they're, they're building the next version is you, it drops you off at the front and it goes and finds a parking spot. Did you hear that they can now, um, I don't know how we got on, you started this, but I, so I'm going to continue <laughs> it. Did you know that you can, uh, that there's like a meter made diversion so if it sensors a meter made like writing you a ticket by the car it like takes it like moves. It takes off <laughs> it's like i'm out of here see you nerds it's no crazy. i know that that's awesome it's crazy i know that it'll dance but anyways i'm like fascinated Jeez. i'm fascinated by this car i am too now um but they got that screen they got like karaoke I think they like sold they like they like did more sales than bmw and mercedes last year i believe in like 2018 or something it was like something crazy i'm just fascinated by i feel like elon musk is He's one of my heroes. Yeah. I, I don't know much about him personally, but just the way his brain works, I'm just I'm fascinated. So but I anyways. do want to throw this out there. If anyone wants me to come um, evaluate their sales team, motivate their sales team, cool. you know, yeah. I would love to do that. That would be a consulting I, deal, yeah. obviously. I, that's one of the things I'm probably enjoying the most over the last few months. Cool. I, spent, I spent two days with that Hispanic team recently, and they're you know what's awesome? They're doing jumping jacks every morning. They're, they're writing yeah. their goals down. They're doing jumping jacks and they're role playing a whole team every day now. I like it. Because that's a big mistake I used to make too. It's really easy to like not really be on the same page and get prepared and people just float into work and oh I'm gonna start selling at ten o'clock. Like if they're on my sales team here, if they're not like wide freaking awake by like eight thirty, five, eight forty when we get done with the big team meeting. I am going to wake them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, they need it, you know. And, and, and they're responding well. They're like, this is the greatest place in the world. I'm making tons of money. And I'm like, guys, are you noticing all this working? And they're like, oh, my gosh, I wish we had done it sooner. Yeah, no doubt. And, and I'm apologizing because for the last year and a half, I had someone else managing my sales team. Yeah, true. In a different way, multiple different sales people. And well, and I heard, I had, I heard people be like, man, I just – I don't get to hang out with Cody anymore. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? They would just be like, Cody's gone and yada, yada. And well, there were salespeople that didn't, when we were doing those tours, there was s- several new salespeople that didn't see me, but a few times for like the first month they worked here. Yeah. 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 And they actually did fine still, they, but yeah, they, they did not like this fine. No, no. So, oh, yeah. all right. Well, if you, if you could sum up one like tip for a person that's trying to build a sales team, what would you tell them? Just mm. here's the number one thing that I would say is you're starting to build a team. You, I mean, there's maybe not just one thing, but what is a top? Uh, yeah, I, my mind goes a couple couple ways. Um, one, you've got to be a leader and you got to lead by example. So, so if I'm not willing to work out every day and wake up early and train every day and all this kind of stuff, then I can't expect them to because that's just dumb. Yeah. Okay. Also, I feel like we – are trying to make them better every day. I have them give me their objections. We write them down. I give them sentences to say, we work on closing, we work on fact finding, we role play as a team, either back and forth or through one of those competitive games every single day. And the biggest problem with sales teams is most sales teams are moving backwards. Over time, the owner doesn't realize it, but the sales team is moving backwards over time. Because the more lenient you are, the more they're going to take it and run with it, right? If you, if you let a sales guy make 10 dials and show up late and go to lunch early and stay lunch late and leave early and not make sales for a week, you know what? They're, they're going to do it because you're allowing it to happen. And so if any of those things are happening, number one, it's your fault, like it was mine. And I feel like People need to be in structured environments where they're improving every single day and they can feel the improvement. I agree. Totally, man. And it instills confidence. Like the, these guys, they, they could have filled any call from any person. And I'll, I'll challenge you right now. If you're listening to the podcast and you want to like mess with my sales team, go for it. Call in. 833-40-AGENT. I'm telling you, they are prepared. They are ready. I don't care what you throw at them. You That's could say, funny. hey, I hate your guts. Right? Perfect. I'm with you. You know what? Most people do until they try our product and then they love us. How many leads would you like to start with? Right? Yep, yep. I'm telling you, they are prepared and ready. So I, I like love it. someone to 
test that out. No, that's good. Somebody out there is going to mess with you. I know, like... It'll happen. Eric Fierro or Justin Brock. There you is go. Gonna call it. DeJohn. <laughs> Derek DeJohn. Whitley. There you go, Come man. on. Whitley, don't you call him, man. <laughs> yeah, you're too good. <laughs> um, you, right. you would end up selling them leads. <laughs> Jeez. So, um, when, dude, I feel like it's been fun. I, I just feel like there's a lot of people that, you know, have been just struggling with their small sales team, you know, but you can always get better and we can always learn from each other. I think it's one of the bigger struggles in companies. Well, and if you can crack the code, it's worth millions of dollars. Oh my gosh. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm realizing now we have, okay, another side note real quick. We have outside relationships with places that buy leads from us that have nothing to do with my sales team. They have their own order forms. Okay. I make more money off of and have better margin it comes from my sales team yeah yeah so now i'm realizing that and we're going to scale this thing up to as many people as i can freaking fit in the building good i like it because we when i when it, when i have a salesperson that's a solid salesperson i profit on them also i didn't mention this we now run a PL because i heard someone else doing this and i'm like on oh, every salesperson brilliant on every salesperson yeah. every month profit and loss for the month if you don't make me money you know um we're not going to keep you and if and and, and say if if you lose me money um, and you haven't got where I need you to be in the first 90 days, we're going to yeah, yeah, yeah. move on. Yeah, short, short leash on that for sure. Exactly. Well, what is um, – okay, so P&L, what other numbers do you keep? Daily, daily sales? Yeah, so numbers, we keep, we keep dials, sales, revenue, and commission. Okay. We also set goals for each month. We look at all the numbers. I keep tally of what they're doing for the month and if they're on pace for their goal. Um, I keep last month's numbers up so everybody can see them. So if you're on the bottom, also with our sales board, we we change the order on the board every week. So if you sucked one week, you move to the bottom of the board. Okay. Well, I haven't seen the, that. If you were the champ last week, you're on top. I didn't see that. Yep. That's cool. I like that. Where'd you pick that up? Is that your own deal? Yeah. That's cool. I like it. Just an idea. Because that's so much about like, you know, we all have like, I didn't care what it was when I was on the sales floor. If there was a toaster that I already had five of, I'm still winning that thing. That's it. You know what I mean? That's, that's a trophy it. that I beat. Yeah. My... We don't want to be on the bottom of the board. No, 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 no. And if you're not competitive, you shouldn't be in sales anyway. That's good, man. That's yeah. good. Well, dude, I feel like it's been good, man. Like, do you have any other tips for the people to, that are building their sales teams or anything else? Gosh. I think you just gotta the 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 energy. I still think the energy is the biggest the biggest piece. I mean, if the energy's right, the culture's right, um, and there's enough structure and organization and trainings multiple times a day, you know, you'll be fine. I like it. All right, man. Well, dude, what else you got? Anything else? Or we we, we wrapped up? I we- guess I'm good, man. Uh, this was fun though. I like this. I like this. I think this is one of the things in our in our business. A lot of people have sales teams. So there's somebody out there listening right now that's sitting, sitting, you know, has a sales team and they're dissatisfied with the sales team. Uh, there's ways to provide structure. So hopefully this helps. Um, if you want me to help, I'll help. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us on this week's podcast. And uh, we'll, we'll swing back around the next time. 